podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. The North Carolina River with the biggest basin and the widest floodplain also carries the most water, and that is the Roanoke. The Roanoke River drains about 13,000 square miles, three quarters of it in Virginia. When it finally winds down through northeastern North Carolina, its big bottomland swamps are five miles wide in places, and it empties into Bachelor Bay in the western Albemarle Sound just below Plymouth. The Albemarle and Pamlico Sounds together, called by hydrologists the Albemarle Lagoon, comprise one of the largest enclosed embayments in the world and most of its waters are supplied by the Roanoke River. No wonder then that in the very early 1600s, the Albemarle Sound was called the Sea of Roanoke. The Roanoke Navigation Canal was built between 1817 and 1823 to get freight boats around the falls, a 44-foot drop here at Roanoke Rapids and Weldon. In 1976, the old canal and towpath made it onto the National Register of Historic Places. The Roanoke has always been a popular fishing ground for anglers after the big, delicious rockfish, the striped bass. This anadromous fish comes into our estuaries from the sea by the tens of thousands to spawn. And in the spring of the year, fishermen find them splashing and thrashing around thick as can be in the river in what's long been called the rockfish fight. That's a colorful name for the occasion, considering that, in fact, the fish are mating. Historic Halifax on the Roanoke was a colonial political center and here, on April 12, 1776, leaders of our state passed the Halifax Resolves, the first Declaration of Independence from Great Britain. Bill of Rights proponent Wiley Jones and his kinsman and rival, General William Richardson Davy, father of the University of North Carolina, both made their homes here. But it wasn't all politics. This was also quite a horse racing place. Nearby Northampton County, just over the river, was where one of early America's best known racehorses, the legendary champion Sir Archie, quite literally strutted his stuff. The low riverbound land inside a deep sea curve in the Roanoke across from Halifax has long been called Akanichi Neck after the Southeastern Sioux tribe. In antebellum days, a Northern family named Burguin inherited plantations here, moved south and planted cotton then corn and wheat on a big scale in these grounds. They were progressive planters, employing deep plowing, subsoiling, liming, and clover growing to make the neck produce. And to get that produce to market, they promoted Roanoke River navigation. They brought one of the first two McCormick Reapers into the South, and they tried hired Irish labor as an alternative to black slavery. But they gave up on that and became ardent defenders of the old Southern order and paid dearly for it. On the first day of Gettysburg, July 1st, 1863, Henry Burguin Jr. fell with most of the 26th North Carolina Infantry and died. At 22, he was one of the youngest officers of that ill-fated army, and history knows him as the boy colonel of the Confederacy. Mebin Holloman Burguin, the boy colonel's more recent kinswoman, has written of better fortunes in her Akanichi Neck adventure novels, Hunter's Hideout and River Treasure. In River Treasure, the Roanoke River is a major character, restoring a branch rerouted by the 1877 flood long enough for the 12-year-old hero to find a chest of Civil War silver in the old creek bed and win down payment for his flooded out family's new farm. Some of the richest bird life we have is down there, the Nature Conservancy's great Roanoke explorer, Merrill Lynch, once told me. He said, the Mississippi kite has its northernmost range along the Roanoke at Akanichi Neck. The cerulean warbler, it's there. There's a heronry full of great egrets and great blues. And the turkeys were never hunted out down there. So what's there in the neck are natives, native genes. Fort Branch, high on the bluff of Rainbow Banks near the community of Hamilton, was a Confederate choke point during the Civil War, during most of which the Union held Plymouth, downriver near its mouth. Keeping the Union forces from getting any farther upriver, protected the Wilmington and Weldon Railroad Bridge, a major link for military goods that had reached Wilmington through the Union Naval Blockade, 
and we're now northbound to Lee's Army in Virginia. Fort Branch also defended the shipbuilding site for the Confederate ironclad Albemarle, which would be a key to the rebel retaking of Plymouth and holding it for seven months during the last year of the Civil War. There are a dozen or so tent camping platforms deep in the big bottomland swamp that makes up the Roanoke River National Wildlife Refuge. 20,000 acres near Williamston and Windsor, Jamesville and Plymouth. This one is named Beaver Lodge. The refuge actually stretches 70 miles from Hamilton to the mouth of the river. And the Roanoke River Partners, headquartered in Windsor, has built the camping platforms with much volunteer effort to promote tourism deep in this extraordinary environment. They have names like Beaver Tail, Barred Owl Roost, Cypress Cathedral, and Bear Run. And out here, you really are away from everything, almost. My fellow musician, Fiddler Clay Buckner, came out here to camp several years ago and said he woke up after only a half hour sleep to what he called the sounds of the haunted Amazonian rainforest. I have not been in the presence of such an uproar, Clay told me, since the last time I attended a top fuel drag race. What he heard, naturally, was a great cacophonous chorus of barred owls howling at each other, a constant avian chorus through the long swamp night. A great Carolina fishery for most of the past 15,000 years has been that of the herring, which like the rockfish also run up the Roanoke in the spring. In the 19th century, Eastern Carolina was probably as well known for salt herring as it was for tar and turpentine. Though this vast historic fishery is but a shade of what it once was, one may still find its celebratory epicenter here in Jamesville, home of the herring festival and the world renowned Cypress Grill, hard by the Roanoke River. Here, you let them know how you'd like your herring cooked. Lightly done, sunny side up, or fried hard, cremated. Nothing about the riverine face of Plymouth and its quiet, relaxed waterfront suggests that in this place, 20,000 soldiers and sailors once clashed in North Carolina's second largest Civil War engagement, the Battle of Plymouth, a three-day brutality in April 1864. Confederate forces attacking the Union garrison from south and east in league with the Ram Albemarle that sank one Union ship and ran off four others, retook Plymouth and held it until October that year. Then a daring Union lieutenant named Cushing boated upriver, laid a torpedo under the Albemarle's metal deck, exploded it, and sank her. Four days later, on Halloween 1864, Plymouth was in Union hands once again. One would not guess that the Riverside Grace Episcopal Church once gave up her very pews and gallery planking to make coffins for the Civil War dead. And the old Roanoke says nothing of such things as it rolls past Plymouth toward the Sound and the Sea. Nine islands between Williamston and these mouths of Roanoke were named by Jamestown's Captain John Smith in 1624 in honor of King James I's favorite author and Smith's good friend the English travel writer, Samuel Perkis. They're fringed with gorgeous green gold freshwater marshes, and we call them the Purchase Islands. Anyone wanting a true hold, a powerful purchase on wild southern territory, such as William Faulkner wrote about in The Bear, need look no farther than right here along the Roanoke. To go down this river is to traverse the massive jungle that met the first colonists, Ralph Lane and his men, in early 1586 when they were pushing on to the brink of starvation, searching for silver as if their very souls depended on it. The real treasure was here all along. This is our last big bottom, last of the Eastern South's truly huge hardwood bottomland swamps. And the river that rules it all, the Roanoke, is our Amazon. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.